Hi, my name is Anu Buzruk. I work as a senior academic assistant at College of DuPage Learning Commons Department. I mainly help with the accounting courses. In my previous videos, I have explained the accounting cycle and also some key concepts of one of the major assets, which is inventory. Now let's move on to the next major assets, one of the current assets or rather the most liquid current asset that is cash. Now as far as accounting of cash or the money that you have in your bank account is concerned, the main key factor where students most of the time need help is the bank reconciliation statement as to how to prepare this statement and what is the end use of this statement. So just like any other assets, the cash asset also needs to be accounted for properly so that the business owner knows whether there are any mismanagements or any fraudulent activities going on in the company. Now one of the ways to know about any fraudulent activities or to have a check on them is preparation of bank reconciliation statement. Now in this bank reconciliation statement, of course, we will be comparing two things. One is the statement that the bank has provided us, us means the business owner, and the other one is all the records that the accountant has kept in the company. And then through the bank reconciliation statement, we will try to prove the accuracy of the two statements or you will see as to what are the reasons behind the difference between balance as per the two statements. So from the bank, one will get the statement at the end of the accounting period or rather at the end of the month or two weeks, whatever is the policy of the bank. And in that bank statement, all you get to see is date wise check numbers which are issued to different parties and the amount of that check and similarly date wise deposits which are received by the bank through different sources. Now as far as the bank is concerned, these check numbers and these deposits are listed in this statement and similarly there is a cash account, the T account or ledger account which is maintained by the accountant. Now in this T account, the accountant has listed out all the debits means all the receipts or deposits and everywhere uh, or, or all the avenues where the money has been spent or withdrawals. Okay. Now at any point of time usually the balance as per the bank statement and the balance as per the cash account, they never match. Now what is the difference between the two statements and what are the different reasons behind these two balances? That is the whole business of bank reconciliation statement. So what do you do in a bank reconciliation statement? Now this statement can be prepared either in a T account fashion or in a vertical fashion. Now here I will be explaining the T account format of the bank reconciliation statement. So on the left side we will be writing the balance of cash as per 
bank and on the right side we will be writing the balance as per the books means the company's books which the accountant is maintaining. Now these two balances as I mentioned just a few seconds ago usually do not matter uh, do not match and then in a bank reconciliation statement we will be fig figuring out as to what are the reasons behind this not matching of the balances. Now one of the reasons will be deposits in transit. So how do you know which deposits are in transit? So you will be comparing these two statements and whatever deposits are recorded on the debit side of cash account, you will try to match each and every line item with the deposits recorded in the bank statement. And whichever deposit you do not see in the bank statement, that is your deposit which is on transit. So what it means is the accountant deposited that check in the bank on the very last day of the accounting period and it is yet to be deposited in the bank. And that's why these deposits in transit are missing in the bank statement. So in the reconciliation statement, we will be adding them in the bank balance. Whatever is missing in the bank statement, we are adding on the bank side. Similarly, there are certain outstanding checks. Now what are these outstanding checks and how do we uh, locate them? Again, we will be looking at the check numbers listed by the banker and we will be looking at the withdrawals accounted for by the accountant. And whichever checks are missing means the cashier has written the check to the supplier but that check is yet to be encashed by the supplier and that is the reason why those checks are missing in the bank statement. So all those checks which are missing in the bank statement, we are going to subtract them from the bank balance because we have already subtracted our cash account but it is not yet gone down from the bank side so we are going to subtract that amount in the bank reconciliation statement. Then there are sometimes errors made by the bank so whatever are those errors and depending on the nature of the error we will give effect of that amount on the bank side. Sometimes instead of 75, the banker might have written the number as 57 and uh, things like that. But those amounts are correctly recorded by the accountant. So we are not going to do anything on the book side. Now similarly, let's look at the book side as to what is to be done here. Now whatever are the amounts which are deposited, so deposits, Sorry about the spelling mistake. Deposits and interest incomes, they are to be added. Now what is this? The bank has given you interest for the amount that you have kept in the bank and the bank has already deposited that amount in your bank account but the accountant does not know about it and that's why that amount is not reflecting in the cash account. So our bank balance has gone up but the cash balance has not gone up up to that amount. So we are going to add that amount in the book balance and increase the balance. Similarly, the bank has charged you for some or the other reasons. Overdrawn balance or the safe deposit valves fees, something or the other of that kind. So because of those bank charges, the bank statement balance is low 
whereas your cash account balance is not to that level so we are going to subtract that amount from the bank ba or book balance to bring the amount down now there is something called nsf check what is this non sufficient fund check so what is happening here when we received a check from a customer we recorded that transaction as cash received or cash debit and we recorded it as accounts receivable credit so we credited that customer saying that the person has given us the money but the bank never could collect that money from the customer because there wasn't sufficient balance in the customer's account non sufficient fund and because of that the bank balance is still low and our balance is at a higher level because we debited the cash and we increased our deposit so we are going to bring it down so we will subtract that amount from the book side because we are never going to get that money so in this way again if there are any errors made made by the accountant then we will give effect of those errors depending on what kind of error it is extra money or less money so depending on that we will be doing addition or subtraction and after doing all these things when we do the math if the balances on both the sides are exactly the same then that is an indicator that there is no fraudulent activity in the business because we have legitimate support for accuracy of the two statements now the last part after preparing this bank reconciliation statement the accountant has one more responsibility that is writing the adjusting journal entries for everything that has happened on the book side because as far as our accounting books are concerned everything that has happened on the bank side we have already recorded those things the deposits in transit we have already recorded them in the cash account outstanding checks we have already recorded them in the cash account so we are going to ignore this side as far as the journal entry making is concerned we will be focusing only on the book side so the deposits or interest income we will be writing the adjusting journal entry saying that we received cash so cash will be debited and that cash was against interest income so interest income or interest received will be credited similarly for bank charges it will be exactly the opposite bank charges will be debited because that is our charge or those are our expenses and cash account will be credited because the cash is going down then nsf check all we will do is we will switch the original entry when we were under the assumption that the customer has given us money we had recorded the fact as cash debit and accounts receivable credit and we want to nullify this effect because it's non sufficient fund check so all we will do is we will switch the entry so the adjusting journal entry will be accounts receivable will be debited and cash will be credited so in this way once you draw the bank reconciliation statement and you write the correcting adjusting journal entries your job of checking the accuracy of the cash account is done i hope the video is useful